was only a matter of time, people. One of the most popular gaming mics from Logitech, the G502, gets a wireless upgrade. They've been doing such a good job of breaking down the stigma surrounding wireless peripherals and gaming in terms of battery life and sensor performance, and their current wireless army portfolio is plenty satisfactory. And so this is my experience with the G502 Lightspeed Wireless. Enjoy after this. Damn, what type of ITX system you run? And this is an ATX machine. You mean micro ATX? No, no, full size ATX components is just a small package. It can still satisfy. The Q500L by Cooler Master, an affordable and a pretty compact enclosure for all your regular hardware with perforated exterior, a PSU bracket that shifts up and down, flexible side IO, and awesome cable management. The Q500L, a compact frame with full ATX satisfaction. Check it out below. All right, so let's get the technicals out of the way first. Among the entire wireless army from Logitech, this one is a bit on the heavier side at 114 grams, with the option to add 16 more grams with these new weight systems, keeping true to the original design. Either adding eight grams to the back of the mouse and or distributing smaller two gram weights around the center balance. For people who love a heavier mouse under the hand, this is awesome, but I still prefer the lightweight Champion, the G Pro Wireless that is the same price, by the way, over the G502 Lightspeed. And of course, this is for all my FPS goodness, whereas I'm totally fine using the G502 for editing and like some more critical things, but aim-wise, I'm more comfortable with lighter. And as usual, all the mice will be linked in the description below if you check out. Thank you very much. Now, despite it looking the same with the side textures and the glossy buttons, everything under the hood is actually totally new to make it even lighter versus the wired version. So the fan favorite hyper scroll wheel is now rubberized and fitter with super tactile scroll steps and the same activation for hyper scroll. The bottom magnetic plate is smaller to reveal our weight compartment. There's also the cover for the USB receiver area. And if you have a power play mat, this is where you insert the power puck that charges the mouse whenever it's on the power play mat. Oh my God, that is a lot of power. And honestly, I would be okay for them not to include the PowerPlay compatibility and lowering the price a bit. The G logo is now slightly larger with all the same RGB goodness and the buttons are on the right places with DPI up and down, browser switches and the sniper button or DPI shift is slightly too forward for my grip style, but it'd be okay for larger hands. Also by default, you can check the battery status with the G9 key that gives us a color code. Everything is remappable as usual and you can save your profiles to the mouse itself, but that is for some reason inside the gear settings and the DPI shift speeds are adjusted in one increments for really precise customization on that wonderful Hero 16K sensor. And that's what we've seen on all of their flagship wireless mice so far, plus the hero editions of the G Pro and the G502. Literally, there's nothing bad to say about its performance. There's no filtering, no acceleration, zero smoothing. So you basically get raw tracking throughout the entire full range of DPI. And the only disadvantage here is the lack of any liftoff distance adjustment, uh, which is not really an issue at lower DPI, but it might uh, become a little bit too jerky at higher DPI settings. As for battery life, this thing is rated at 48 hours of continuous usage, which means for my activity, I can go for a whole week, eight hours a day on a single charge. The sensor is super efficient and shuts down whenever it's not in use. And so the only culprit here is that RGB illumination logo. It's consuming more power than the sensor while in use. Oh, and the cable included here is very nice, but giving the deep housing for that micro USB port at the front, don't lose the cable. And so I remember using the G502 Proteus Spectrum, the original one, and thinking it was my favorite mouse because I love the shape, I love the buttons, I love the scroll wheel. Uh, and the weight at the time was not really an issue. It provided a little bit more stability for my desktop operations, but as mice got smaller, as mice got lighter and wireless, I've actually never looked back, but I can totally see the appeal of the G502 wireless for it to replace the original for many users. And for casual gaming, the weight is not really an issue for me, but I do feel slightly locked down and less free with my aim versus the total control that I feel with my flicks on the G Pro wireless or the original G Pro mouse. And perhaps I've just gotten totally used to the simplified shape and I'm not really a fan of this whole complex design. You know, some years ago, I was totally into that, but now with a slightly more ergonomic shape and much lighter body uh, and the same price too, I would say that for most people, if you have $150 for a mouse, definitely consider the G Pro Wireless 
instead. Unless, of course, you've been using the original G502 and really love the shape, want to stick with it, and then, of course, the G502 wireless would be satisfactory. But having said all that, the Logitech G305 is still my top favorite wireless recommendation for a mouse because of its shape, because of its battery life, because of its weight at 99 grams, and you can further reduce that by using a lithium battery and the price too at only $60 you cannot go wrong. And if the G502 wireless was slightly cheaper to separate itself from the end game, that is the G Pro wireless, then I would say it would have better chances. But for now, I would recommend the G Pro wireless all the way. All right, I don't mean to disappoint, and I know there are many people who love the G502 for exactly what it is, slightly heavier mouse, a bit more complicated shape, cool design, that hyper scroll wheel button as well. Um, but if you could look beyond the horizon, especially at that uh, $150 price point, then definitely consider other options. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.